Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read, starting in verse 18 through the end of the chapter. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can open up your word and you can speak to us through your word. As we look at one of these verses in particular, I pray that you will speak to us, that you will be honored, Christ will be exalted, the Spirit will illuminate our hearts and our minds, and we go out today, especially today, and worship and adore the Christ, Jesus, whom you sent. I pray this all in his name. Amen. This past Wednesday, we were in a prayer meeting. We got done, we finished our prayer time, and we started talking about names. And we were all talking about how we named our kids. Uh, another couple were, was there, they were going to have a grandchild, and they were talking about what they were deciding to name this grandbaby. And as I reflected on that this week, some of the most exciting times Katie and I had while, while we were waiting to have children was selecting their names. What would we call them? Each of our children's names are very special to Katie and myself. Whether it be the spelling of their name, the significance of their name, their middle name, it means, they mean certain things to us. Some name their children of, uh, of distant relatives. Some keep the tradition going by, by naming them after themselves, juniors, thirds, fourths, fifths, etc., etc. Keeping this family name from in, 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 in line from generation to generation. But names have great significance, don't they? I guess like any other word in the dictionary, a person's name has a particular meaning. I mean, throughout Scripture we see many different genealogies of names, some, all, some almost impossible to pronounce, but each of them have great significance because all Scripture is profitable. I mean, there's many times that God changed certain individuals' names within the Bible because of their meaning. For instance, Abram, which means high father, was changed to Abraham, which means father of many. He would become the father of a great nation, Israel, many people. God himself told Moses his particular name. Remember when Moses goes up, sees this burning bush, and God from the burning bush talks to him, says, hey, you're on holy ground. What does God say, Moses, I'm going to send you to the Israelites? And Moses is like, well, what if they ask me who sent me? What do I tell them? He says, tell them that I am sent you. 
This name really points to God's self-existence, his eternality. It denotes, I am the one who is, who always has been, and who always will be. I am. That name has great significance. And I was thinking this week, as we focus again on Christmas morning, the phrase, you shall call his name Jesus, kept coming back to my mind. That's what I want to focus on today. You shall call his name Jesus. Because there's great significance in that name. There's great significance in the name given to that child. The child that we come and celebrate today. So what does the name Jesus actually mean? And what's the significance of it? I mean, more than likely, we've all sung that chorus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Well, what is the something? That's what I want to focus on today. So the meaning of the name and the significance of the name. That's my two points, the meaning of the name and the significance of the name. And we'll be focusing on Matthew chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 21 today. Specifically, you shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the meaning of the name Jesus. You shall name him Jesus. God is a self-revealing God. He reveals himself to us. He's a God who speaks to us. And he speaks to us through the words of the Bible. That's why we have the scriptures. These 66 books are God's words to us. Through the word, he, he tells us about himself. He tells us what he's like. I mean, the idea that, that God is self-revealing is an incredible truth. Because if God did not speak to us through his word, if he instead remained silent, then we would have by no means any inclination of who God is and what he's like. Because God transcends beyond anything that we can imagine or think. He's far above anything that we can know about him. He's transcendent. I mean, he exists beyond the heavens and the earth. And if we didn't have his word, if we didn't have the scriptures, he would be unattainable to us. There would be no way for us to know him. But again, thanks be to God, he has revealed himself to us through his word. And one of the main ways in which God reveals himself to us is through his names. God's names are very important. Because, again, they reveal the aspects of who he is in himself. They reveal his actions within himself and the relation he has with us as his creation. I like what John MacArthur states regarding God's name. He says, God's names represent him so personally that how one treats God's name is equivalent to how one treats God. Let me read that again. God's names represent him so personally that how one treats God's name is equivalent to how one treats God. I mean, there are so many names within Scripture that describe who God is, particularly in, in relation to us. The names of God serve to reveal who God is to us. I mean, really, I mean, the third commandment, right? You shall not use God's name in vain. Have you ever heard anyone use Mohammed's name as a cuss word. I've never. Have you ever heard anyone use Allah as a cuss word? I have never heard. But yet, we use the name of God, OMG, Jesus Christ, as a cuss word. So how we view God's name and how we use God's name God's name really 
demonstrates what we really think about God. And the most common name within the scripture of God is Yahweh. It's used hundreds of times. It's a Hebrew word without any vowels. It's really impossible to pronounce. It's so sacred to the Jews that, that they had to construct it that way because they didn't want to use God's name in vain. It's Yahweh, Y-H-W-H is, is, are the letters. And again, while Moses was talking to God in Exodus 3, God said to him, my name is I am. I am Yahweh. It is my name forever. In Exodus 3.15. So Yahweh is, is the most popular of God's name. It shows that he is and he will always be. He's eternal. But then there's Elohim that we see in the scriptures. And that indicates God's supreme power, his supreme might and strength for his people. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. We have many compound names that describe who God is. And I'm sure you'll recognize some. Jehovah, Jehovah Sabaoth, it means the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is our provider. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. El Shaddai, he's God Almighty. I mean, all these names, and again, there's, there's hundreds of more names described within the scriptures, but it gives us a glimpse of, of who God is. They tell us something about God. They tell us about his nature. They tell us about his character and about his purpose. So if you want to know who God is and what he's like, then consider some of these names of God. What does he call himself? And what do these names reveal about him? And again, that brings us back to the name Jesus. Matthew 121, again, the text we read earlier, the angel comes and tells Joseph, hey, Mary will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Even in Luke 131, when the angel informs Mary that, that she was going to conceive a child, this is going to be a miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit, he says, behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall name him Jesus. Why Jesus? Why not name him some other name? Like he's from the line of David. Why not name him after David? Why not name him after Abraham? He comes from the, the line of Abraham. We see that in, in Matthew chapter 1, this great genealogy of Jesus. I mean, Joseph is his earthly father. He's going to raise him up and teach him his carpenter skills? Why not name him after Joseph? I mean, why Jesus? These two verses are so important in Scripture. I'm sure we've all read them many, many times and just passed over that phrase, you shall name him Jesus. But they're so important because in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God is telling us so much about himself. The name Jesus is a combination of Hebrew words. It's a combination of Hebrew words. First, Yahweh. And another word that means to help or rescue or, or deliver or save. In Hebrew, it's pronounced Yeshua. In which we get the English name Joshua. Which means the Lord saves. In Greek, it's Jesus. If we transliterate it from the Greek letters, that, that's how we come to pronounce Jesus. But Jesus literally means Yahweh saves. Jesus literally means Yahweh saves. Jesus is the promise that was laid down in, in way back in Genesis chapter 3. Remember, God created everything good. Sin came into the world. God put a curse on man, on the woman, on the earth, on, on the serpent. And he says, hey, the seed of the woman will come and crush your head. 
And from that time, in Genesis 3, the seed of the woman who had crushed the serpent's head throughout the rest of the Old Testament, there's this plan of salvation that has been traced, tracing this lineage, lineage awaiting for the one who God promised would come from the seed of the woman to crush the serpent's head. And right here, on Christmas, we see this child. He's born of a virgin. He's the one we come and celebrate. He is God in human flesh. As Matthew 1, 24 said, or 23 says, he is Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. I mean, that's, the, that's what the virgin birth signifies. We talked about the incarnation with Randall. He, he shared that little clip with Paul Harvey. The importance of the virgin birth. God with us. God in human flesh. And again, I just want to stop here and give you a little footnote of the importance of the virgin birth. Why is it so essential to the Christian faith? Virgin birth affirms the deity of Jesus as God in human flesh. It affirms that. If Jesus was born by, by the means of a human father and a mother, then he is not truly God. Therefore, the virgin birth allows for the preexistence of the divine person and his nature. He took on human flesh. That's Philippians 2. Jesus, even though he existed in the form of God, took on human flesh by humbling himself. God, the creator of all things, took on flesh. He had to be born of a virgin. He had to come from the seed of the woman. Natural conception, having a human father and a human mother, would have produced this, this second person. His existence would have begun at the conception of, of Joseph and Mary, but it didn't. He existed before time began, and he took on human flesh. Jesus himself claimed that, that he was sent into this world through heaven by the Father, demonstrating that he existed prior to his birth. He told the Jews in John 8.58, before Abraham was born, I am. Proving his eternal existence and proving to be God as he used God's name, I am. The virgin birth, birth proves that Jesus was divine. He was fully God. But it also affirms the sinless humanity of Jesus. Again, if Jesus was born of natural parents, of a human father and a human mother, that he would have been born a sinner like every other person who has ever been born on the face of the earth. He would have needed a savior for himself. Again, all the descendants of Adam, we all come from Adam and Eve. All the descendants of Adam are sinners because Adam sinned. He disobeyed God. That, that's the doctrine of original sin. Everyone comes from Adam and we all sin in Adam. We are all made sinners through Adam's sin. We all inherit that sinful nature from Adam. That's what Romans 5.12 says. Therefore, just as through one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death came about through sin. That's why we die, because we sin. And so death spread to all men, because all sinned in Adam, except one. The virgin birth is necessary because through the conception by the Holy Spirit, Jesus was born fully human, yet he remained sinless because he was fully God. Two natures in one person. And because of that miraculous act, he is Yahweh, and it's he who saves. And his name proves that. I mean, there's this running joke in our home whenever we do Bible time or family devotions. If I ask a question, I can guarantee 99.9% .9 of the answers that Benji will say is Jesus. 
Every, every question. It could be totally off topic, but guess what? His answer is going to be Jesus. But he's technically not wrong. Because Jesus is the answer, isn't he? He's the answer. Jesus is always the answer, particularly for, for the sinfulness that we have inside of us. We're broken. We're wretched individuals. We're, we, we're helpless in our own life. But God the Father ensured that His Son would receive this name. As we looked at earlier, the angel told both Mary and Joseph separately to name the Messiah Jesus. This is the message that was declared when the Lord's birth was, was announced. You shall name him Yahweh saves. You shall name him Jesus. I mean, we always say this. God is the one who saves. It is he who rescues. He's the God who helps us. He's the God who delivers us. I mean, this is all true. Because in the name of Jesus, God revealed and declared to us and to the world that this is what he does. He saves. He named his son Jesus. It's true. Yahweh does save. It is the truth that was declared at the birth of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yahweh saves. I think we should find encouragement in that this morning. What God is saying to us about himself in the name of Jesus, through the incarnation of the Son, through Jesus, he, he's saying, I have not given up on you. Because my Son is named salvation. Salvation comes through him, in him alone. Yahweh saves. You shall name him Jesus. And since Jesus' name means that, Yahweh saves, what's the, what's the significance of the name then? The significance of this name is what the angel told Joseph next. In Matthew one twenty one. he says, you're going to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is the significance behind the name Jesus. This is the significance behind Yahweh saves. He came to save his people from their sins. Again, Jesus did not come to invent a holiday. He didn't. He came for one purpose and one purpose alone, to save his people from their sins. I mean, the angel goes on to say he, and, and, and that word there, he, is emphatic. He and him alone, nobody else, it is he who will save his people from their sins. Jesus came to deal with sin. And his name gives expression of that significant truth. I mean, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he didn't give up on you. He has not given up on you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not go to hell. Because if you do not believe in him, you will die in your sins, and that's the punishment God has. He requires perfection. You have to be perfect in order to get to heaven. Well, Nate, we're not perfect yet. You're finally starting to figure it out if you're, if you're giving me that answer. Yes, you are not perfect. You need a Savior. Without a Savior, you will be in God's prison, hell, for all eternity. And he is righteous and just to send you there. What's great is God sent his son, became a man, and died in our stead. That's the, the miracle in all this. Why would he do something like that for those who hate him, to those who sin and disobey over and over? Because he loved us. God demonstrated his own love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, what did he do? Christ died for us. John 3, 17, for God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's his name, Yahweh saves. Again, that's the message of this book. 
That's the message of this book. God, the creator of all things, graciously rescues doomed sinners from eternal punishment in hell and then transfers them, gives them new life and transfers them into eternal joy of heaven. It's all accomplished through Jesus. He came to save. He came to rescue. And we are evidenced of that with his name, Yahweh saves. It's in that name that salvation is found. That's, that's what we read this morning, right, in Acts 4. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. Jesus is the stone which, which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. There is salvation in no other name, in no one else. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Again, if you're here today, and you're like, you know what, man, I'm, I just feel I'm, I'm okay. I, I have done way more good than, way, than, than I have bad. For the wages of sin is death. Singular. Sin is death. If you have lied, guess what? All liars will take part in the lake of fire. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You're not good enough. <coughs> You need to be perfect. You can't be perfect. Jesus said, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Like I said earlier, we're in big trouble, folks. We need a Savior. But God did not let us down because he sent a Savior. Because he always saves. He sent Jesus. We're dead in our trespasses and sins. That's what Paul says in Ephesians 2. We must try, we must stop trying to work our way to heaven. I don't care how many times you have gone to church. I don't care how long you've sat here and listened to me speak. It doesn't matter. Jesus said, many will come to me and say, look at all these great things I did, even in your name. Look at You know how many times I had to listen to Nate ramble on and on and on in your name? It's not going to get you there. I'm sorry. Jesus is going to say, depart from me. You worker of lawlessness. You sinner. I never knew you. All our works, all the good things that we do, guess what? Isaiah 64, 6 says they're filthy rags. It's only by the grace of God, through the faith given to us by God, in Jesus Christ alone, in Him alone, where we can be reconciled, where that relationship with God can be renewed, and we're given new life. That's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not of yourself, not of your works. It's a gift of God, because if it was your works, guess what we do? We boast in our works. We are dead people in need of saving. And God demonstrates who he is by sending his son, Jesus, to accomplish the great need that we, that, that we desperately need. Yahweh saves. He is God incarnate. Truly God, truly man, it is he who lived the perfect life. Then he willingly laid down his life for sinners like you and me. He took the wrath upon himself that was deserved for us. We deserve hell. That's fair. My kids always say, it's not fair, it's not fair. You know what's fair? Fair is hell for each and every one of us. But God in his goodness and his grace became a man and went to the cross on our behalf. And then three days later, he defeated death, proving to satisfy the wrath 
that he bore for sinners. And he was given the name which is above every name. The name of Jesus. Every knee will bow to those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Again, folks, you will bow your name to Jesus. Either you will bow today in repentance and faith, or you will bow to him in fear, knowing that he has come to judge the living and the dead in righteousness. Are you righteous enough to get to heaven? You need his righteousness. God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that if you repent, turn from your sin, trust alone in Jesus, Yahweh saves, in him, guess what? He credits you the righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We can stand before God and God looks at us as though we lived the perfect righteous life of Jesus. Amen? What an awesome thought. That's who we celebrate. That's who we come and celebrate today. We should always want to be in church, even on Christmas morning. That's who he is. He's our Savior. He's done so much to us. Yahweh saves. I mean, that's the sole purpose of the incarnation. It's the sole purpose of his birth. It was our redemption. Because he has come to save his people from there. Are you one of his people? Are you one? If you are, you'll bow your knee to him today. Today is the day of salvation. Come to Christ today. Don't wait. It's slippery out there. You might die. Come to Jesus. I love what J.C. Ryle states about Jesus' name. He says this. The name Jesus means Savior. It is given to the Lord because he saves his people. This is his special office, saving. He saves them from the guilt of sin by washing them in his own atoning blood. He saves them from the dominion of sin by putting in their hearts the sanctifying spirit. He saves them from the presence of sin when he takes them out of this world to rest with him and he will save them from all the consequences of sin when he shall give them a glorious body at the last day. That's what Christians long for. Blessed and holy are Christ's people. You understand that? You are holy and blessed if you are one of his because we are saved from sin forever. We are cleansed from guilt by Christ's blood we are met for heaven by Christ's spirit. That's salvation. That's what we come and adore. So are you saved? Are you regenerated? Are you converted? Have you bowed your knee to Christ? Have you confessed with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Because Ryle states, if, if you cleave to your sin, if you still love your sin, you're not saved and you're going to hell. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to, it, it, I want you to be renewed. I want you to have this feeling that's inside me that just wants to burst forth and proclaim him over and over and over again because Yahweh saves. He saves. He loves you. And he gave his only begotten son so that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Today's the day of salvation. There's nothing you can do to merit salvation. There is one God and one mediator, one goal between, be, between God and us. It's Jesus Christ. It's the man, Christ Jesus. So will you say, yeah, you know what? There is, there is something about that name. That name demonstrates to us all that God saves that he accomplished what we ourselves could never do. 
He lived the perfect life. He died the perfect death. He defeated death. And he will come again and gather those, gather his people to himself, and we will reign with him. Will you come to him today? What a great Christmas present to have new life given to you today. Because it's Yahweh who saves. Let me close with this little chorus. And I, I, I think we've sung it here. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. He's our blessed Redeemer. And guess what? He's the living Word. He'll save you if you want. If you bow your knee to Him, He'll save you. Those who come to me, I will by no means cast out. Will you come to him today? Because it is him and him alone who saves. And we know by the name of Jesus, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you again for Jesus. Thank you for naming him Jesus. Because it does demonstrate who you truly are. You are the God of salvation. We love you for that. We honor you for that. We bow down before you because of that. For all that you have done. You authored that plan of salvation. You accomplished it. And then you come and apply it to our lives. If there's someone here not saved, I pray you will work on their heart. Help them see their sin for what it is exceedingly sinful and know that there's forgiveness in Jesus. That's why he died, to save his people from their sins. And I pray this all in his name. Amen.